In this episode, I wanted to talk about my approach to my garden here. So, um, enter the door and we enter the garden. So, first of all, I live in the wilds with wild animals and I have a huge fence around here. Well, it's not huge, but it's enough to keep the deer out. Um, and then here, this is finer mesh to keep some of the smaller critters out a little bit, mostly like over here I've got, uh, in this neck of the woods, I've got ground squirrels that love to eat my cabbage. Um, but not only that, I, you can't really see it here, but th then I have this mesh that goes all the way into the ground and it goes about this, uh, goes down about two feet into the ground and then it makes an abrupt 90 degrees. So for any burrowing animals, like here I've got meadow voles and uh, ground squirrels, it is kind of built like a like a jail, trying to keep things um, well, trying to keep things out of my little jail. Um, so then, when you get in here, you can see that the ground has this uh, lining on it. Um, here, this is probably easier to see. So it's just like this, and what this does is this is a weed block. Um, it is a plastic material. I wish they made stuff that wasn't made out of plastic, but um, the, the reason why I have this all meshed out is to keep the weeds from coming up because, well, with my lifestyle, I'm gone. You know, if I'm gone traveling, I might be gone for a month or more. And if I didn't have a chance to weed this garden, all I would have in this rich soil in this area would just be weeds and it would outcompete everything I'm trying to grow. So this is a weed block and then I just cut holes to accommodate the plants that I want. So like here, this is, um, oh, this is a really uh, pretty good looking eggplant or uh, aubergine, they call it. Uh, aubergine, yeah, something like that. But see, I have holes cut in this mesh and then in the spring I plant the, the starters of these. Uh, but it works really well. Like I said, I can be gone for I'll plant this in the spring. I might be on assignment for a month, two months, and I come back to this. Nothing but a lush, healthy garden full of food. Um, to be able to water this, uh, you might be able to see it better over here. Uh, I guess let's look at, so for things like where I have to plant seeds, um, I just have slits and then I plant seeds specifically. So these are um, I have onion seeds and I have, uh, this is all carrots. I didn't get a chance to do beets this year, but I wish I, I wish I would have, wish I could have. Um, okay, back to the watering. You can see that this is wet right in here. And that is because right under here, right under right here, I have a drip line. So the water comes right out of these little holes. I don't know if you can see that quite well, but yeah, water just slowly drips out of these holes. And where this water is coming from, if you didn't have a system like mine, you could, of course, hook this up to a hose, especially a timer. But where this water is coming from, I'm not taking it out of the aquifer. I'm not taking it out of uh, the municipal water supply. It's coming out of a spring that's actually, the reason why I really was attracted to this property before I bought it is it has water sp spurting out the hillside. So I have a, I have a spring coming out that hillside where I planted that willow tree up there and then a cistern that's holding the water in another episode we'll talk we can go up to that cistern and see how the water is coming out of the ground and how I'm using that to raise a koi koi goldfish too but anyways I have water storage up there and then a hose comes down there's a timer and then that allows water to come in for however much time I need every day and then that waters the waters this garden and hopefully you can see that it works pretty well. So yeah, um, what other things are really important? So a couple of things, we'll, we'll go back over here towards the entrance. And we close the door because we don't want the varmints coming in. But up here on all four corners, well you can see over there, I have these birdhouses. So 
that's not just for that's not just for pretty uh they're very specific birdhouses so this one is for violet blue green swallows and they are like fighter jets they are aerial predators they eat mosquitoes and other flying insects especially moths and things a lot of the moths make caterpillars that are eating a lot of my insects so i it's like having this natural friend rather than having pesticides and chemicals I use Mother Nature and my understanding of Mother Nature. So those birds right there will be at the front line as far as trying to at least limit a lot of the pests that would be attacking my garden. Um, I have maybe over here. Let's go look at this birdhouse over here. Okay, so this one is a different kind of of bird nest it has a smaller hole so the violet blue green swallows will not use that one but what I'm trying to attract are house wrens which are little small brown birds um, they're not really beautiful birds but they have tons of personality and their song is amazing and rather than being aerial predators like fighter jets like the swallows these things are like they're constantly marauding and looking in every nook and cranny hopping on logs and going through, like I said, every little nook and cranny, eating things like the caterpillars and the grasshoppers. I mean, they are nonstop predators. If you go watch them, especially in the spring, I swear, like every minute, they're, they're coming back with beaks full of insects feeding their little babies that are in there. But if you have a house wren box next to your garden, it seems like it's almost impossible to have anything attacking your garden. So um, again, utilizing nature, utilizing an understanding of science and nature to help me out. And then I don't have to go and, and buy nasty chemicals. Um, okay, that's a, a real quick rundown of the garden and we can go into more specifics in, in future episodes. If you like what you've just seen, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.